Good morning, guys. Pretzelman945 here, and happy weekend. Yay! Um, this video is a review. So, I recently finished watching the spectacular mini Netflix original mini series called The Queen's Gambit. And this is my review of the show. So, starting off with the premise of the show. So, it's based off a book. Um, I'm assuming also called The Queen's Gambit, though I'm not actually completely sure. But, um, the premise of the show is about this girl named Beth, short for Elizabeth, and, um, Beth Harmon, who is, who, um, uh, her mother is killed when she's only nine, so she's taken to an orphanage for a few years until when she eventually gets adopted. Um, like, at, and while she's there, she learns how to play chess from the janitor and is really, really, really good at it. So, and then, uh, she has parents that adopt her, and, um, eventually her mom... Her adopted mother really starts supporting her chess earning because she allows it can make her money. So, there's that whole thing. Um, anyway, about what I think of the plot this year. So, personally, I, I love chess. Like, I've loved it for years, and even though I am, like, dumpster fire level terrible at it, um... Uh, that does that, that does not take away the fact that I still have a lot of fun playing chess, and I really, really do love this strategy, all the strategy that's involved with the game. Even if I only know, like, about this much of what's actually portrayed in the show. <laughs> um, but I, I love um, the premise of a chess show, because I don't think it's something that's explored very often. And... I think chess is just such an interesting game, um, and um, and uh, I think that they execute the tone of the chess very well, um, for one, and I think the show overall also has excellent pacing, and it's and it's a um I say it's a mini series because it's only seven episodes, but each one is like an hour long. And personally, like of course I don't mind like the more episodes, the shorter shorter length of episodes. But I personally prefer this kind of style of TV show where there is longer episodes but kind of less. In fact, a lot of my favorite TV shows are actually structured that way. And I really like that format because I think that it means that um, you can fit a lot of stuff into one episode, which overall improves plot continuity, in my opinion. Um, so I, I do, I do first of all, approve, very much approve that the show follows that kind of structure, that episodal structure. Um, and then... Uh, with regards to the, um, characters, um, uh, sorry, just checking on my phone, uh, I, uh, really just, um, I think Beth Harmon is a very well-made character, and, um, so are a lot of the characters within the show, um, because, you see, like, um, and all the opponents that she defeats will eventually play a bigger role in the story, which I absolutely approve of. I think that's a very ingenious idea. Um, but, you see the gem named Mr. Scheibel teach her how to play chess. And, eventually, she does this simultaneous, which is, like, a turn for um playing multiple games of chess at the same time against like nine people of a chess club she beats them all in their faces and um obviously they have a kid actor for those types of scenes but um 
Then the actor that plays Beth Harmon comes around when she's after like 15, when she's adopted, is when she's actually a little bit older. And while Beth is at the orphanage, she befriends this fellow person named Jolene. Now, Jolene will also play a much bigger role in the story. Um, and eventually, after being adopted, Beth saves enough to go to the for, to, to go to a chess tournament where she completely obliterates everybody, including Beltic, who is the uh, state champion at the time, and he's like the person there would need to be, and whatever. So, um, as the episodes progress, you kind of see her facing tougher and tougher opponents, which is to be expected she goes to bigger and bigger tournaments in, like, Cincinnati, Las Vegas, New Mexico, Paris, and, like, eventually the end of the show, Moscow, we'll get to that later. Um, so the first opponent that she plays is this guy named Harry Beltic, and then in one later tournament, she draws with this guy named Benny something. I don't know his last name necessarily, but um, she eventually makes it all the way up to this tournament in New Mexico where she plays this very, very... Because this show is set in the 60s, so that mean, that was like peak communism time period there and i really think they expertly messed that into the tone of their story the creators of the show expertly meshed the tone of that with the other t overall with, with the overall tone of the story of the show and um she faces this really really intimidating player. He's a Russian player, supposed to be the best in the world. His name is Borgov. And he's kind of like this fearful entity throughout the course of the show because she loses to him once in New Mexico and um she eventually like plays um and so then she's feeling really distraught about it and she doesn't know where her life is going to go and like right after that because her her adopted mother like at a certain point because like her father is just a real jerk because the character's name is alston and he's meant to be this giant jerk in the show who just is com is pretty completely uncaring about both his wife and his uh adopted daughter and so basically he leaves because of a work thing and is not seen until later in the show um but i do think he is um i wouldn't say the worst character because that's kind of his role but he's just not a very pleasant character though i do understand like why he was written that way so when we're talking about uh Beth's mother, this adopted mother, Mrs. Wheatley, then we see that, um, because her real mother, like, we kind of see flashbacks, which I think is a, a great element of the show, by the way, is the flashbacks at the start of the episode where Beth's mother, Alice Harmon, is actually just, um, saying various quotes that tend to apply in some way to Beth's life throughout the duration of the episode, which I think is, really really cool and very very consistent structure um anyway so best adopted mother says i can start being a mother and then she points out that even that like if we go to the tournament natty they even make in third place we have enough money to pay we still be making a profit and so they kind of get into this kind of like travel deal together where they're like um going to different chess tournaments because of the money that they make on other chess tournaments so you really just see the bond between them increase and eventually there's this whole thing about like um miss wheatley just igniting an old flame down in new mexico which is where the chess tournament is and stuff like that and eventually like during during the um duration of that like after she loses to Morgan for the first time in New Mexico, then her mother dies, which, like of hepatitis, which 
is that it that in my opinion was like when I saw that I was thinking wow this is profound and it was only the fourth episode out of seven or something so it's like right spam right bam in the middle so um we really see her emotions because um she because as she describes while while she was facing bored of like she describes him as this cold calculating entity that never seemed to make any wrong moves and um therefore um you just really like see him you he's kind of this like ghostly entity in the show that's just kind of like like it's like belt that's insurmountable in, insur like impassable mountain insurmountable mountain insurmountable mountain <laughs> yeah i'm saying that insurmountable mountain um and uh, um basically between those combinations she feels really really depressed and kind of feels out of it for a bit and then Harry Beltic calls her up to kind of hopefully offer training, even though um, Beth is obviously way better than Beltic by this point. Um, and um, as that ensues, they start talking and they become really friendly. But then this is where, and I really have to complain about a negative aspect of the show here, is all these like one night stands that Beth has because she does it with Harry Beltic and she does it with this Benny guy like later in the ship like later and I really think that it just kind of undermines Beth's character it kind of comes across as as cheap in my opinion and it's not something and it's really not something I particularly like in the show and I honestly think if that aspect of it was removed, then the show would be nearly perfect. But um, it's just that little, little thing that's really just dragging it down for me. Um, and anyway, they have a one-night stand. And um, basically, uh, something happened where like they're supposedly moving together, which I thought was a weird twist of events because like they've known each other for a few days and then he just talked about like moving in and then moving back out and i don't know that whole that whole thing is just weird to me and eventually after harry beltic has done all the training she can um she like um goes to the u.s open and plays the Benny Moore's guy, who, for people that remember, is the person that she lost to in the Las Vegas tournament, or she drew with, I should say, that's more accurate, she, she drew with, um, and, essentially, um, she beats his butt, basically, and, um, they, they kind of get talking, she offers to, or he offers to train her for her eventual match in Paris again, for a rematch in Paris against Borgoff. And um, while they're there, she kind of stays with him. And then there's a whole thing where they have a one night stand again, which is, I don't know, like, I've, like I said previously, it, I think it really undermines, like, the value of the characters that they're making in the show, and I just really, I, I, I don't like it. Like, I, I just really don't like it. It's just, ill. Um, but, uh, in spite of that, the training sequences are really good, and they kind of develop this, like, friendship, or, or, or kind of like a, um, a bond, where, like, um, and I'll, and, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll elaborate further on this. Um, uh, like, uh, when I get to that part about Paris, which is coming soon. But, um, like, when you're talking about that, 
then you um and you and I really appreciate like the relationship that they have that is not romantic. Like mine is that whole one stand crap. One night stand crap. Um I cannot stand, ha ha ha. But <laughs> um just overall, um the relationship is kind of like this friendship that betrays itself and I, and I will elaborate this more in like a few minutes or, or whatever time because the next bit we're going to talk about is the Paris part now after she receives training she's feeling really confident she's ready to beat Bordeaux but she's still kind of nervous about it and which is understandable because you know he's like the world champion and all that and um come to come time their match then we see how that we see her at her rematch. It's kind of because because you know in those types of situations when a character loses once, then you know, they kind of go through the training, then Duvar, then they beat the person they was trying to beat the next time. That's not what happens here, and I really have to applaud the creators and writers of the show for going this route. Because it really, it, they could have gone this route. It would have been fun. So it would have been a good show. It would have been a good story because I like that kind of story format. But what they did is they made Beth lose again. So, and, I, and I'll talk about this more in a minute. But I also think that during the match, the way that she lost was also amazing writing because... It's kind of this mini flashback to how the moment when um, Beth is playing with Mr. Scheibel for the first time and she sees how um, uh, um, that um, like when she loses her queen in on the way, then. He tries to tell him, and she and he tries to tell her that she should resign the game, and that is is actually ultimately paid off here because he kind of because she kind of lets her queen her king down, and she kind of resigns by putting her king down in an honorable way, just like Mr. Shadow Tucker, which is a nice payoff to the relationship that both Drews have, but also. You knew what I was talking about a little earlier, um, about the whole, um, losing twice thing. So, I really think this is where, um, the writing potential of the story just absolutely expands and reaches its full, like, max potential. And... And basically, the um the night before her match is like uh, is this night with this friend of hers that she met through Benny and whatever, and um because both in Paris and they want to go have a drink or whatever, and basically that night is eventually ruins her chess match, and then they really get to tackle a relatable problem that she has with drinking, and. Um, basically, um, like, the, the, these individual elements are good, but when they're combined together, then it really creates a very, very profound story element, which is definitely one of the biggest pluses that I can give this show is for how um is definitely for how creative and how many different plot formats is attempted while still being incredibly cohesive and very profound um so she gets drunk and, and, she, and she and she develops a really big dreaming problem kind of falls out of doing chess and then she kind of has a conversation with beltic and i think beltic is just the right person for this and Actually, elaborating on the relationship more, because when Beth is hidden back from Paris, she's like, I lost, and Benny offers to, to let her come back to him, 
is so they can train more and just kind of up her confidence. But she's just like, no, I don't want to do that. And and he and he says something very surreal. He's like, and, and what? Just sit around and drink? And that type of thing is really um that kind of not really breaking the fourth wall necessarily, but like making a reference to like what is probably going to happen. So and eventually, um after after that occurs for some time, then um, she has this conversation with Beltic, which makes her kind of just rethink her life almost. And in the, in the very last episode, Jolene reappears. Now, Jolene is only there for maybe the first episode, is is mainly when the adoption part is, and then the and then like she gets adopted around the start of the second episode. But the they basically establish in an extremely deep character relationship within one episode and that's the first episode which i think is incredible i really think that um that whole for that whole that the way that they did that through the dialogue is really really incredible so and this is another huge part of the plot, but while um, Beth is at the place, then they offer these, like, vitamins um, and these green pills that Beth has to take are basically, they really help her playing chess because when she sleeps and she takes the pills right before she goes to bed, it allows her to visualize a chess game, which is a really interesting dynamic of the show. That I think that they handled very expertly, in, in, even though it was like a brand new thing they were introducing within the film. I still think that they in, they, they handled, they introduced, and executed it perfectly. And um, as the show progresses. She is constantly in need of these pills to help her win the chess tournaments. And she kind of develops an addiction. But, yeah, that's what that, yeah, it is an addiction. Which I think is was another bold move for, for them to go that path. And I'm thinking, is she going to develop an addiction problem to these pills? Um, and in terms of my, uh, thoughts were correct in that in that way but i didn't think it would go i thought she would become addicted at the orphanage only i didn't really picture it being as, as well of a scale as i really did which i actually like much much better than um just what i had thought was going to happen which is even better when you when there's something like bigger than what in like it's what you expect but it's also bigger than what you expect so i love that so, that was also very nice. And, um, really, um, Beth's character in the pills are a big part of the show until this ultimate payoff moment where she kind of just flushes them down the toilet. And that, and that itself has another even bigger payoff moment later on at the very end of the show when she's facing Borgov for the last time in Russia. Um, and, um, because, um, so, she, so she obviously, like, um, through this, she obviously destroys all her relationships, so, come time, she goes to Moscow, and she somewhat regains her confidence, but, um, she plays through the various matches, and, um, he encounters an opponent who is very old, he's a very old Russian player, and he was world champion, like, before Beth was even born, is the context of this opponent, he's not Borgov, like, this opponent is not Borgov, but he's another Russian, and I think he's really one of the more profound opponents, because he says that he really admires 
Beth based on the games that she's put that he's seen her play and, and review her playing and and the fact that Beth has reviewed all of this guy's games who I forget what his name is but um and basically I love the kind of small relationship the minor but still relationship between the two characters of admiration which I think was a nice touch um so then, come the time of the Borgov match, she basically plays the first half, and then Borgov adjourns, which basically means, like, cut off the match and leave the board exactly the way it is. And then we eventually see that um, there's a payoff moment in several ways. So for one thing, all the characters... All the character relationships is basically messed up with like Beltic and Benny or whatever is kind of paid off here because they they're at the they're all on the other end of the phone along with the other friends of Benny that she really liked and and they and they're all helping her calculate her approach to um, Borgov's game which really does help her but when Borgov doesn't do what they, they expected or they predicted, basically. Um, then the ultimate payoff moment is where Beth looks Beth looks like she has this look on her face and she looks like she lost. And then she looks up. And, like, this is without taking any pills or anything. She sees the chessboard on the ceiling. Which is an ultimate payoff to the whole arc of having, like, the pills and the fact that she can just do it on her own. And because of that, then she's able to visualize the game, and she's able to actually win, which is like basically the end of, of the show or whatever. Um, but um, and um, basically, uh, while she's just kind of walking through Russia, she kind of leaves the limo, they can take her to the airport, she just walks around, she sees these elderly gentlemen playing chess, and they all recognize her, and she just sits down and plays a game, and says, let's play. And that's how the show ends, and I think it's a really, really great ending, honestly. I think that's an expertly crafted ending, especially because she's now the world champion and whatnot. Um... So, uh, I wanted to elaborate on a few more things, specifically about the adoption sequence, because I didn't go much into that, but basically the, um, like, manager or whatever at the place is Mrs. Deerdorf. Yes, I know, it's a really dumb name, but she's actually quite a pivotal, um, character in the story, um, and, uh, I also want to elaborate on a few more things about Olsen, who is best adoptive father character um before closing out the review so i think that the, tr the relationship between um the two of them is really interesting because um at a certain point like because bell Beth, not Bill, Beth needs the pills to do play chess. She becomes addicted to them. So, like, during, like, this educational movie show or whatever, she, um, sneaks into the kitchen where they basically banned the green kit, the green pills, at, at a certain point. And, um, she sneaks into the kitchen and gets them. And... Um, eventually, like, um, just, uh, she eventually just, um, just faints right there, right then, and then eventually they, and then eventually she bans chess, but they're still going to play chess, and, um, uh, that whole relationship, I think, is really expertly done. It further plays into how much she's actually addicted to the pills, as we see. Um, and, um, um, and then I want to elaborate uh, further on uh, Beth's relationship with Jolene because they really kind of develop this friendship, and she shows up again in the last episode, and 
Uh, she, Beth thinks it's Beltic that's following her back to talk or whatever. And um, you really kind of see this um, because they they end up reuniting and they and they play a whole bunch of sports together and they just get to talking, which is really really profound to me because. Um, she just kind of, uh, shares the moments, and, and there's eventually this chess book that she has, it's called, like, Modern Chess Openings, or whatever, and we assume that in the beginning of the show that Mr. Scheibel gives it to her, but as we find out in this episode, I think this is such ingenious writing, it was actually... Jolene that had given Beth that book because she'd seen her love for chess. Now, I really think that that is very, very profound writing because it really makes you think that like there's something in between. Because basically, by this point, Mr. Scheibel had died. So, he you know, was a reasonable old man and, and whatever, so it was about time, I guess. But he and Jolene go to the funeral there and in this moment in the hallway where, because because the, because the story is like for while Jolene was still there, like Mrs. Dearborn had injured her leg, and this is really awesome payoff moment to their kind of relationship in the show where there's this hallway scene and she sees her like crippled like that, and then Mrs. Dearborn all all just like she was in the first episode is is she's like. You should be in chapel, young lady, and Beth's like, yes, ma'am, which kind of shows how Beth still had a respect for her, which I think is really, really interesting on the part of Beth's character. And um, when furthering on the Jolene-Beth relationship that they have, basically we see that when she goes down the basement that Mr. Scheibel had had all these newspaper articles for winning tournaments and whatever. And it really shows to me the ultimate payoff of their relationship because it kind of shows how overall supportive he really was of Beth the entire time. Even if he never really, uh, excuse me, even if he never showed it the most. Excuse me again. Um... Which I really think that whole thing with Jolie being in the last episode is absolutely genius. And it's a very, very good inclusion. And obviously the thing about the fact that Jolie actually got back the chess book, like that reveal, is very, prof is very, very profound writing. Now, before I close out this review, I want to elaborate on a few more things about Olsen Wheatley. Because I, I mentioned him, but I didn't talk about him uh, enough. So, basically... He's the jerk character of the show. He fits the role of the jerk character in the show. And he does this quite well because um, what ends up happening is um, he is um, essentially just... Um, He just kind of ignores Beth, basically, and doesn't really want anything at all to do with her, and just said to do, and just and just really adopted Beth to make her life happy and shut her up. And that's where we kind of get these payoff moments from the perspective of Beth about Mrs. Wheat is, um, I forget her first name, but, um, She always calls her mother and stuff like that, and, like, this whole thing about, like, she died, and she, and then Olsen, Olsen, even on the episode, she is like, okay, fine, you can have the house. But then, we really see his cowardly side, which is a nice, like, archetype that they chose to follow with his character, where they're kind of, where he's kind of just like, I'm afraid. I I want it. I I I don't I don't want I want to fight you on it legal stuff. And there's this whole thing with a lawyer and stuff like that about who actually ends up getting to own the property 
and she manages to scrap up enough money to pay off Alston, which is kind of a jerk move, but then again, I kind of respect it at the same time because that's how because that's how it's written. And I really do respect the archetype that they chose to write Alston's character in. So, in conclusion, uh, this has been a very long review. It's 35 minutes by this point, um, as I'm recording. But, um, uh, this has in, in amazing, great, very good characters, very well integrated um, tone and setting. Incredible character relationships that are paid off in several ways, and Beth's main character is in, incessantly profound throughout the, the show, and really just kind of shows that that the writers really understood the character they were um, writing, which I really have to respect. And um, the last thing is this story and, like, the plot of the show is also really, really profound. And I have to really give the writers a lot of credit for going to such a level of depth with the story by making her lose twice and then also follow the alcoholic storyline. So... Overall, I rate this show extremely highly. I think it's an extremely good show. And for any feminist out there in particular, because that's another point, that, that's another thing I wanted to mention, because a big setting of this show is actually the fact that Beth is the first, like, U.S. women champion in, like, uh, in the first successful women chess player. So I would re definitely recommend this show for people that love chess or... Um, are very deep in feminism because this show is very good at both of those. Anyway, um, I rate this show very highly and I think it's an excellent story, very cohesive, amazing character and character relationships. Thank you for watching this very lengthy review and bye-bye.